Welcome back to the Leon Edwards Fan Club. This week I mentioned how I live rent free in bodybuilder's head and it was just proven when the CEO of the Fitness Matrix called me out. Salty, sensitive, steroid head bodybuilder, Greg Douchehead. I mean Doucet. My bad, my French isn't any good. Before diving into his video, reacting to a couple of my videos, there's a couple things you need to know. Firstly, to Greg Doucette's fans or people coming from his video, here's my philosophy on lifting weights and building muscle. My style of training is called athletic bodybuilding where you use strength and conditioning principles to build a more attractive life through fitness. This incorporates using athletic movements instead of bodybuilding movements. For example, an athletic movement is a squat while a bodybuilding movement is like a hack squat. An athletic movement is a standing bicep curl while a bodybuilding movement is a seated bicep curl. These are things I'm universally known for, but Greg said did not address that and kind of put me in an area where I don't belong. And second, he gets very emotional and very upset. Honestly, I've never seen him like this before. He makes it very blunt, but you can see in his eyes and the words he says, I really got to him. One of my favorites, you want to know what's in a man's heart. You listen to the words that comes out of his mouth. And he's weak, he's weak. And so I'm just excited to prove that again. So his reaction to my content was taken from an emotional mental state. Greg, you said, I want you to know that this isn't the ultimate feelings championships, but the ultimate fighting championships. So now let's dive into the response video. Coach Greg, in today's video, why bodybuilders are mentally ill. Does anyone believe that? Well, I'm watching videos by this guy. He calls himself Coach Mario Rios, something like that. So my name is Mario Rios, firstly, and the video going over why bodybuilders are mentally ill, if you actually go into my content with a positive mindset, with a fun attitude, you realize I make very good points. I'll address this later on when you react to my video, though. And he states that bodybuilders are mentally ill makes a video about it and I'm thinking does this guy know anything so I watched another video of which he happened to call out coach Greg and based on what I'm seeing the guy knows nothing about nothing he's useless he has no valuable information whatsoever he just likes to make controversial videos where he spews nonsense and so I personally think the guy just went to TikTok University I know nothing about nothing you can see here that he's obviously very emotional at this point and he's upset with something I said which you'll see why he's upset later on but he's one of those classic bodybuilders who takes a 30 second video of mine it doesn't go into my long form video where i just like go down not trying to go viral and just speak facts to try and say i know nothing i'd love to see a bodybuilder dissect some of my long form content because they just can't short form content is very easy to take out of context which he does a lot of times here just likes to make controversial videos where he spews nonsense and so i personally think the guy just went to tiktok university so apparently i have no valuable information yet i'm the person who's actually trying to make fitness great again how am i making fitness great again by actually bringing back the health the performance and the looks in weightlifting and building muscle. And then he says I graduated from TikTok University, which is a weird like insult toward me because I have my bachelor's of science in exercise science. I'm also a certified personal trainer and I'm still continuing my education because I'm studying for my CSES certification or certified strength and conditioning specialist, which is basically personal trainer on steroids. And if you look at a real TikTok University or TikTok content creator, they can't grow on YouTube because real content grows on YouTube. You'll see someone with 100,000 followers on TikTok and 1,000 on YouTube because they have bad content and no new ideas. But yes, because I have new ideas, I know nothing. This guy just looks like your typical TikTok doctor, about 20 years of age, hasn't studied anything, and just screams and shouts nonsense, hoping to get views. I haven't studied anything. Again, I have my bachelor's of science in exercise science. This just shows he's not familiar with me. Bodybuilders are mentally ill. It's the only explanation for a bodybuilder style of training. They sit on their asses because they're lazy. And so bodybuilders are mentally ill because they sit on their asses and they're lazy. I mean, at first I thought, is he confusing bodybuilding with powerlifting? Because bodybuilders don't sit on their asses and do nothing. Yes, they do. Look at the guy I just put on the screen. He was doing a hack squat with the belt on. Anyone familiar with my content knows that I call bodybuilders lazy because they sit on their asses all the time because they like to do movements that remove the stability, coordination, and balance demands from an exercise. Example being the hack squat with a belt rather than a barbell squat that actually really pushes you. That actually builds functional muscle which will help you with your performance. And Charles Oliveira, a UFC fighter with almost 7 million followers on Instagram, even agrees with my methods. Oliveira transformed his UFC career and he attributes that transformation to one thing, adding muscle mass. I also preach standing up whenever possible. Why do a shoulder press sitting down when you can do it standing up. If you're doing a shoulder press sitting down, that's lazy. That's a fact. But you were not aware of this, so you went on some complete random tangent about power lifters. I mean, powerlifting, of which I did as well, we did in fact rest a lot between sets, but the typical bodybuilder isn't sitting on their asses and lazy. Bodybuilders, in fact, are quite the opposite. Yes, yeah, sitting down doing a bicep curl isn't lazy. Doing a bicep curl with a belt on isn't lazy. 
Like, come on, bro, that's literally so lazy. Get on your damn feet and lift weights. That's not lazy. They're oftentimes doing a lot of cardio and they're not resting as long between sets. And so if anything, bodybuilders are the opposite of being lazy. They avoid all the tough exercises. I mean, how many people think that bodybuilders don't do squats, benches, or deadlifts? We've all seen Ronnie Coleman deadlift and squat and bench in crazy amounts of weights. And he throws up a photo of Alex Eubank as if he's proving a point. Yet Alex Eubank himself has been focusing on the deadlift. Have you not seen his videos? Oh my God. Okay, so I didn't just put a photo of Alex Eubank. It's a clip from a video where he said he doesn't do squat, bench, and deadlift. How to get a more aesthetic physique. All right, three big tips. This might be controversial. Don't focus on squat, bench, deadlift. Like, I don't, I hate to be the one to say it, but I'd never focus on squat, bench, deadlift. And also the video you took from Alex Eubank doing deadlift, I'm not a very big fan of his content. I don't watch his content, but I'm pretty sure he was just doing that because people were wondering what his deadlift is, but he's even said he doesn't squat bench deadlift. So yeah, I put that in to prove a point, which was proven. How about the trend twins? Do you ever see them do squat bench and deadlift? Oh no, no bodybuilders would ever train hard. They avoid every hard exercise because you know, they're lazy. So the Trend Twins were using wrist wraps, elbow sleeves, and had three spotters on a bench press. If you need that much external equipment, especially for a bench press to move the weight, that's lazy. I don't care how much you lift. And God forbid they don't get injured with all that equipment. Really? All to build an unesthetic physique. And so I guess when he looks at Chris Bubb said, he sees a guy that's totally unesthetic. I mean, how is that appealing to anyone? Most people much prefer to have a dad bod, of which Chris also has in the off season, right? This is when you know that Greg Doucette lives under a rock. I am the Leon Edwards guy. I'm his best friend. This is the aesthetic physique, the narrow waist, the moderate amount of muscle with great athletic performance and top tier proportions. Go over any research study, public interview or survey where women go over their preferred body type for a guy. They will always say the bodybuilder is too much. Chris Bum said isn't aesthetic. But Greg Doucette linked me to a dad bod. But everybody knows I'm linked to the aesthetic athletic physique because athletic is aesthetic. How is he making any sense? Perhaps he doesn't know the difference between bodybuilding and powerlifting. Powerlifting is a subject I've rarely even mentioned on my channel. The only thing I do is athletics versus bodybuilding. For a guy like you who loves the research so much, you should probably know this. Powerlifting, sure, they rest a long time between sets and they don't care about the aesthetics. They just care about the power and the strength. But bodybuilding, they're quite literally trying to develop that V taper, the wide shoulders, the small waist, the flaring quads. And so how does this make any sense? Because bodybuilders take it too far. There's a difference between universal aesthetics and bodybuilding aesthetics. People like Alex Dubank, Seabun, David Lade, they're bodybuilding aesthetic, but in real life, they're not aesthetic. You can watch a video of Alex Dubank on Omegle. People don't think he looks good. His chest is too much. And David Lade and Seabun would be considered too big. While someone like Leon Edwards would have women all over over him. You're probably thinking Mario cares too much about being attractive. I saw what it did to my life. I was an unattractive kid and when I became more attractive, my life got better, not just my looks. Which is why I'm such a big advocate of athletic bodybuilding for improving your looks, but also the rest of your life. When you look like a bodybuilder, it makes your life worse. When you want to look like Leon Edwards, your life gets a lot better. Not only that, but imagine doing fitness that hurts your health. Okay, first things first. Training for bodybuilding, as in going to the gym, doing cardio, lifting weights, trying to build an aesthetic physique. That does not hurt your health. This is where he's wrong. He's getting me confused with some guy who's like anti-building muscle. I'm a huge advocate for building muscle, but building muscle the right way, the functional way, the athletic way. Go look at a fat person who weighs 250 and someone who builds muscle like a bodybuilder, so non-functional muscle who also weighs 250. They're gonna walk the same, their BMI will be the same. It's gonna hurt their knees because your knees can't handle that. Imagine training like a bodybuilder where you have the muscle and bone strength of someone who weighs like 160. You think that's healthy? If you choose to abuse performance enhancing drugs to get that aesthetic physique, then yeah, I'd have to agree with him. Abusing performance enhancing drugs does not make you healthy, but he does not even state this in a video. He just says all bodybuilders are mentally ill. Greg, when I say all bodybuilders, I don't mean like professional bodybuilders. Bodybuilders. I also mean recreational bodybuilders. People who subscribe to me are athletic bodybuilders or athletes. And I'm saying recreational bodybuilding, when you put on muscle in a lazy, non-functional manner, is not healthy for you. Building muscle that hurts your looks, health, and performance just means there's something wrong with you. Building muscle does not hurt your health, looks, and performance. Building muscle doesn't hurt those things. 
bodybuilding, recreational bodybuilding, building non-functional muscle does. Think of it. The majority of people in any sport are oftentimes seen in the weight room. Now, if this were the 1960s, people used to say, if you train with weights, it's going to make you muscle bound. It's going to hurt your performance. But in later years, people discovered, wait a minute, if you lift with weights and get stronger and you continue to work on your flexibility, you work on your craft, you're only going to get better. That is literally like the core philosophy of my channel. You can go watch my athletic bodybuilding video or my MMA training video where I go over this in depth. So you just confirmed it's a good thing to train the way I preach to train. Come on, Gregory. And so everything he stated is nonsense, doesn't make sense. He's just doing this to get views, to cap your attention so that you can make comments saying, why would you say this? But everything I said was nonsense, but this comes from your point of view, which is you don't know what my philosophy is, which makes your core argument invalid because you don't know what I preach. This. And next up, let's see him try to make fun of Coach Greg and put him down and say he doesn't know about anything when I'm going to prove he has no knowledge whatsoever He's just spewing nonsense. All right, if you don't think this guy's about to get emotional after saying all that, go rewatch that and let me know. You got some guy who's like 45 who's getting bullied by some guy who's 25 years old. And he took it personal. Dustin got up in his feelings. He started crying, you know, like the little Kleenex winner he is. He's crying, oh. Gregory Doucheheads weight loss advice is all wrong. And so Coach Gregory Doucheheads weight loss is all wrong. I mean, what's next? Is he gonna call me a manlet or a hobbit? Is this guy Mike O'Hearn? And so yeah, let's make fun of my name. Let's try to insult me that way. As if that's somehow gonna diminish the knowledge that I provide. All right, you manlet hobbit, calm down. It's like, dude, it's a funny intro to a video. It's just a play on words. Am I saying that you don't know anything? Am I attacking your credibility? Not at all. I'm just saying that your weight loss advice is all wrong. However, when you go into my core argument versus your core argument, it all is an opinion. My opinion is different from your opinion, but my opinion has worked for me. Your opinion has worked for you. When we give tips to our audience, I'm going to tell them something that worked for me while you tell them something that worked for you. We're both fine here. But you got so upset because I said Gregory Douchehead. It's funny. When you go into my content with a fun, positive attitude, you learn something. But when you get so upset immediately, you put your mind in a defensive state, so you just ruin what you could learn from a video like mine. And so if you want to lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life, does it not make sense to add cardio? It's great to see a steroid head advocating for cardio. And so it's great to see a steroid head advocating for cardio, yet he knows I'm on 140 milligrams of doctor prescribed HRT per week. He's known that I've been doing that for years, yet he chooses to call me a steroid head. Why would he do that? Well, he's trying to make it look like I don't have any valuable knowledge that I wouldn't know what I'm talking about. Yet, how old is this guy? And here's Greg getting emotional again. This was complete satire. It's irony. Someone taking steroids would have bad endurance and bad cardiovascular health, while someone who loves cardio would have great cardiovascular health and great endurance. It's irony. I learned that from my English literature class in high school. But instead, you took what I said and did a bunch of mental jujitsu to make yourself feel bad. That doesn't make any sense. That's a weak mindset. Go into it with a strong mindset, with a positive mindset, and you wouldn't get your feelings hurt. A lesson from a 24 year old to like a 45 year old. And so he's trying to say, I don't know anything about anything yet. I have a master's degree in kinesiology, a professional bodybuilder, professional powerlifter, set world records, as well as having done 13 years of competitions in triathlons. And so, no, I would know nothing about cardio, lifting weights, or how to lose weight and keep it off. Great resume you have there, but my resume is better. I'm Leon Edwards' best friend. In all seriousness though, like I didn't say you didn't know anything. Like I don't know where you're getting this from. But cardio is the best short-term solution for weight loss, not best long-term. And so he states cardio is only a short-term solution. Short-term. You do cardio, you get in shape, and then it go go away. You can't keep doing it. This is the second example this week of a bodybuilder acting like I hate cardio. I dare someone, especially you, Greg, to find a clip where I say never do cardio. I've never said that. One of my favorite hobbies is kickboxing, which is very cardio heavy. So I actually do cardio myself. When I said that cardio is the best short-term solution, I'm not saying it doesn't work long-term. I'm saying it's the best short-term over weightlifting, while in my opinion, weightlifting is better than cardio long-term for weight loss. But you took me out of context there completely. And again, I dare you to find a clip of me saying never do cardio. Perhaps his only influence is Mike O'Hearn, who tells you you do cardio for a short time and then you stop and that you have to bulk and cut all the time. And that's how you make the gains. Why are you comparing me to a steroid head bodybuilder. I'm literally the most anti-steroid, anti-bodybuilder person on YouTube right now. So that logic doesn't make any sense. Why compare me to Michael O'Hearn? Oh wait, I forgot. You don't really know what I stand for and what I'm about. Mid to high intensity cardio can be very taxing on the body because of 
high boy. And so he's trying to make it look like my recommendation to do year round cardio, it's not going to work because you're going too hard and you can't recover from it. But I don't say to do that in the first place. I'm not a fan of people doing hit cardio, very hard cardio, as it's very difficult to recover from. Trying to make it look like. When someone says trying to make it look like, it's because I didn't do it, I didn't say it, but he got his feelings hurt randomly. If you really watch the video back again, you'll realize it doesn't really have to do with you. You kind of just like allow people to get entertained because believe it or not, you're a big name in this industry. So they watch the rest of my video, but it really doesn't have to do with you. It has to do with my opinion that weightlifting is better than cardio for long-term weight loss and having a lean muscular physique long-term. Whether you're a couch potato, like people who watch coach and so whether you're a couch potato as the subscribers to Coach Mary Rios must be, or you're an elite athlete, like guys who subscribe to Coach Greg. This is the complete reverse. Everybody knows that the athletes, the athletic bodybuilders subscribe to me and the couch potatoes subscribe to you because I've seen you sitting down and doing exercises a lot. That's lazy, you're a lazy trainer. So the athletes subscribe to me, the couch potatoes, that's all you bro, I don't want them. Those are the people who hate me in the comment section. And with that comes an increase in appetite. Well, of course you do. You're burning off a bunch of calories. But guess what? It's only by about 50% or even in fact less. And so if you go out and do cardio and you burn 500 calories, your body's going to say, hey, you burn off 500 calories. You need to eat more. Eat up another 250 calories. But the net result, you're still in the whole 250 calories. Calories in, calories out. That's how you lose weight. And because you're still in a 250 calorie deficit, you're obviously going to lose weight. And guess what else causes you to be hungry? <laughs> Lifting weights. And so let's say you go to the gym and burn off 300 calories. Your body perhaps going to make you eat about 150 back. What kind of mass monster will burn 300 calories in a weightlifting routine? Weightlifting is notorious for how little calories it burns. So in that sense, it won't increase your appetite very much. But through my experience, doing cardio increases your appetite so much. For example, when I just got back into kickboxing, I was doing a lot of cardio and I actually gained weight. Why? Because I ate so much right after. I literally go to Chipotle, get a bowl with chips and walk and eat that, so I gain weight. I probably burned maybe what, like 300 calories during that session, but I got hungry. When you get hungry, it doesn't mean you only eat 150, you just get hungry. So what I did was eat like, 1300 calories from Chipotle after my kickboxing session. So through my experience, the mid intensity cardio made me gain weight. But after weightlifting, I'm not very hungry. Why? Because I didn't burn that many calories from my weightlifting routine. So my cravings or my appetite stays pretty low. Unlike cardio, which spikes your appetite a little bit more, which in my situation, maybe eat way too much. You can lose weight from doing cardio. You can lose weight from lifting weights, but you're going to lose more weight from doing cardio because it burns off far more calories than when you're in a gym lifting weights. And that's why cardio is the best short-term solution for weight loss, like I said in the video. So in terms of satiety, it's not great, and intensity, it will get in the way of your weightlifting routine, which is the best long-term solution for weight loss because muscles are active tissues. So unlike fat, it burns calories. Oh, and so we have a 20-year-old TikToker who states that unlike fat, muscle burns calories. Well, I guess he didn't know that fat or adipose tissue also burns calories. Why does he keep calling me a TikToker? My following on YouTube is way higher, plus I hope that app goes down the drain. So the more muscle you build, the more calories your body will burn. And so perhaps he doesn't follow Jeff Nippert. I mean, he probably only follows guys who are on TikTok. I don't really watch Jeff Nipples videos. According to Wharton, 10 pounds of muscle would burn 50 calories in a day spent at rest. Well, it's actually about 59 according to that. I don't know why they rounded down, but typically 10 pounds of muscle burns about 60 calories. My personal belief, it's probably about 80 as it does vary from person to person. Male or female, different people burn different calories with their muscles at rest. While 10 pounds of fat would burn 20 calories. Clearly, fat does burn calories. Because muscle's active tissue. So unlike fat, it burns calories. Muscle clearly burns more calories than fat. Here's why weightlifting, in my opinion, is better long-term solution for weight loss than cardio. So in my situation, I took an in-body scan a few months back, which had about 90 pounds of muscle. And that was me about 40 pounds heavier than when I started lifting weights, which was at 130 pounds. I was 170 pounds at that time. So that's an increase in 40 pounds. And my metabolism is fast. So I'll go on the higher end of that. That's an extra 320 calories your body burns per day with the addition of 40 pounds of muscle. And per week, that's an extra 2,240 calories. The calories that muscle burns far outweighs the calories that fat burns. 
And when getting lean, people confuse getting lean with just lowering your body fat percentage when it also has to do with adding muscle mass. Doing cardio just lowers the bad weight or fat while adding muscle promotes good weight while also getting rid of bad weight in the long term. Plus, weightlifting actually makes you look good. Cardio won't make you look good unless you've added muscle. And for aesthetics, it's far better too. So you get the aesthetic benefits of building muscle and you get the lean benefits of, I guess, doing cardio in your instance. So while cardio is a win-lose, weightlifting is a win-win. A key example is this picture here and this picture here. I only gained five pounds in a year, but you can see I'm a lot leaner. This was with no cardio. I wasn't doing kickboxing at the time, just weightlifting. And so even though it's burning a lot more calories, it's not gonna burn nearly enough to make a significant difference on your calorie burning needs. It will over the long term. That's why I say weightlifting is better long term. Which will keep off the bad weight and put on good weight. And in terms of aesthetics, if cardio is your priority, you will never look good. And so if you add on 10 extra pounds of muscle from lifting weights, you're gonna have an increased metabolism by about 60, perhaps 80 calories per day when sitting at rest, but perhaps more if guess what? You're doing cardio. Imagine if you use those extra pounds of muscle and you use it to perform cardio at a faster pace. And here's another bodybuilder saying, I hate cardio. I say never do cardio. Again, I've never said that. My core philosophy is do weightlifting at a high intensity and do cardio at a low intensity to build your most aesthetic physique. It will always be that. And so notice my physique. I'm not blasting gear, yet I can eat almost everything I want because I am in fact doing cardio. Well, you're not natural, which I think is a big deal. Think about it this way. Would you trust a trust fund kid who has all this money on how to get rich? Or would you trust the kid who was poor, worked himself up, and now is rich? You would trust the poor kid, right? I'm like the poor kid. I had horrible genetics and stayed natural and built a way more aesthetic physique, went from 130 to 180 pounds, and now I'm still building muscle and still trying to go for that Leon Edwards physique, and I did it without cheating. But all these bodybuilders took steroids, had great genetics, they're trust fund kids. Don't trust them to build muscle. And so if you had to pick between cardio and lifting weights to maintain a lean physique for the rest of your life, by far, cardio is gonna be the winner. A lot of people get lean very confused. Lean means a low body fat with a good amount of muscle. So once you hear that, you already know weightlifting is superior. Weightlifting at a high intensity, supplemented with low intensity cardio, will be the option for staying and getting lean. Because you gotta build the muscle and then you have to keep a low body fat. But when he used to do marathons back in the day, the guy in fact was a lot leaner. Why? because he was doing cardio. The core of his argument is me saying, I don't like cardio, I hate cardio, never do cardio, when I never said that. And so rather than following some TikToker who's perhaps 20 years of age, probably hasn't studied any of this, aside from scrolling through videos, swiping left and right, thinking he knows a bit about everything. Greg, we all know you get all your information from Safari, you're Mr. Safari University. I get my information from textbooks. These are the two that I normally use. This is the gold standard one for strength and conditioning, and this is the one they use in all the med schools they call it netters. This is where most of my knowledge comes from. Yours comes from Safari. And again, I went to school. I went to university. All your bodybuilding friends didn't get close to a university. He doesn't know nothing. He knows deadly squat. He probably doesn't even know how to squat. Here's him getting emotional again. Oh, he doesn't know how to squat. I obviously know how to squat and I don't do it like a lazy bodybuilder. I actually do a barbell squat. And in terms of aesthetics, if cardio is your priority, you will never look good. And so I guess Coach Greg looks like shit. 47 years of age. I used to look good. Now I have a horrible physique from doing five years of cardio. You have a great bodybuilding physique, but I mean, let's be honest. I have a more aesthetic physique. Women would find my physique more aesthetic. But this isn't an aesthetic conversation, but if you put me and you and put it in front of a girl, they choose me. And if you put Seabun and Leon Edwards, they choose Leon Edwards. The reason I bring this up is not to flex, but all guys lift for girls. There's a reason why guys make fun of short guys. If girls like short guys, best believe they'd be making fun of the tall guys. And also one of my core beliefs is building an attractive body. Why? Because research shows that life is better for you when you're more attractive. But if you're the average person and you do zone two cardio, you're not gonna wither away and lose all your muscle. That is nonsense. And in case you still don't believe me, let's look at those bodybuilders. You know, the bodybuilders with the great aesthetics of which this guy says they don't have. Let's take Chris Bumstead. Oftentimes before a show, he's doing over an hour of cardio every single day. Yeah, and best Best believe it's walking, one of my core principles. And sebum is an aesthetic, Leon Edwards is more aesthetic. Go look at the research, go look at the data. All right, Greg, here's what we're gonna do. If you really wanna dissect me, you need to go and watch more of my videos so you know what I stand for and what my philosophy on lifting weights is. Instead of getting all upset because I called you a douche head as a joke, and then putting your emotion in front of the camera for 15 minutes. And find a place where I said not to do cardio. Sebum does what I say. 
high intensity weightlifting, low intensity cardio. And lastly, you need to understand that this is why Leon Edwards has the most aesthetic physique. Check out this video where I go over why athletic bodybuilding, which is my philosophy, is better than bodybuilding.